he said about me. <laughs> I'm just I'm just a very simple, simple brother. I'm your brother. Amen. Let's Amen. pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for an evening like this. We appreciate you for what you've done. We thank you for such a spectacular conference. Thank you for the amazing minds you've brought together to instruct, to teach, to direct, to rebuke and to teach. Father, I ask and I pray that beyond gathering to listen to the voice of a man that you will speak to every individual heart in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray each of these that the words that we're going to be speaking here tonight may transcend human wisdom capabilities in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It's an honor, it's an honor, it's an honor to be here. I appreciate every one of you for the privilege. I consider it a privilege to speak to people of like mind, people who are with the mindset to grow, people who want to who want to go far in life. Who don't want to live a life of trial and error? That's the characteristics of our generation. And whenever I see people, young people, who have the fire in them to grow, to develop themselves, to instruct themselves according to the way of God, it is always a pleasing sight. And I pray this evening, God will touch every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so quickly, in introduction of the program, when I saw the topic, when I saw the flyer and everything, God went. In fact, in fact I, I started laughing because that this word God went, or this phrase, whatever you call it, it has been so used on social media that everyone is so familiar with so convincing to the word. Every dick and Harry says God went. Even people in secondary school say God went. Even married people who want to deceive us on Facebook, they'll say God went, and you think you are with them. But it is a valid, valid concern. Because it is a it is a question that reeks of desperation. People are in a desperate bid to get hooked, to get married, to get into relationships. And the pressure is real for young people. Tomorrow is another Saturday. You see some of your classmates getting married. You see some of your friends getting married. And you're like, what am I doing with my life? You also want to get married, of course. But as Christians, the Bible has instructed us that we are not supposed to get married like the rest of the world. We are not supposed to go into relationships like the rest of the world. We are not supposed to do trial and error like the rest of the world. And so when the, to when the, when, when the topic came out, I was to speak on how to wait on God for a kingdom marriage. Singles and their waiting season, how to wait on God for a kingdom marriage. That will be what I'll be speaking on shortly today. How to wait on God for a kingdom marriage. Quickly, let's open our Bibles to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. Let us interrogate what does waiting mean? What it does it mean to wait? What does it mean to wait? What does it mean to wait? Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. Please, can someone read for us? Can someone read for us the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, from verse 3? Amen. Amen. Is anyone there? Okay, please. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3. Read slowly for us. Okay, praise God. Someone has, someone has typed it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not what lie even though it tarries that means even though it delays the expectation of your heart even though it delays the bible said it will come to pass it will speak but there's an injunction there the next word says wait for it wait for it wait for it do not be in a hurry Everything that is worth it in life is worth waiting for. From the first day you step your feet into the university, everyone knows that, okay, you are here for a degree. But from day one, you don't go to the academic office and demand for your certificates. No, you wait for four years. You wait for five years. Thanks to ASU, you 
you wait for seven years. You wait. You don't just walk to the VC and say, I've gained admission. I need employment quickly, so give me my certificate. They all know you came to, the, to school for your certificate. They all know you came here to get a paper that you use to better your life, but they don't give it to you at, the, at your matriculation. You have to wait for four years, for five years. So why are you in a hurry? God is trying to tell you, wait, let me pass you through this degree program of single. Let me take you through my own degree. So that at the end of this period, I will give you what is standard, what is meant, what is worthy of your life as a Christian. But a lot of people, they don't want to wait. They're in a rush and in a hurry to get into relationships. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. So as we begin, what is a kingdom marriage? Remember we said how to wait on God for a kingdom marriage. How to wait on God. For a kingdom marriage. So what is a kingdom marriage? A kingdom marriage is not is not another big word conjured to oppress singles. No. Every every Saturday tomorrow you see people saying kingdom marriage, kingdom marriage. It's not a term of it is a legitimate term with scriptural backing. It is not as complex as you might have imagined it to be. Kingdom marriage is simply two Christians, a man and a woman, not man and man, not woman and woman, please. Kingdom marriage is simply two Christians accepting to model their marriage after Christ and his bride, which is the church. So when two Christians come together, remember two Christians, not a Yahoo boy and his slave queen, two Christians who have given themselves to God, come together to model their marriage, not after Kanye West. Not after Queen Elizabeth, not after Barack Obama, to so model their marriage after Christ and his church. And if you have any idea what how Christ modeled his relationship with the church, it, you, you will not be in a hurry to get married. You will not be in a hurry to get married. Choosing to die for the church, that is the hallmark of the, of, of the relationship Christ had with the church. And that is the model every Christian should aspire to. How many of you can die for that person that is giving you sleepless nights? How many of you? Then you are not ready for a kingdom marriage. How many of you can forsake everything, every single penny on it? For that person that you, you are calling the love of my life? How many of you? But that is the model Christ has set. So if you, if, if you don't want a Christian marriage or a kingdom marriage, please... Don't tell God you are looking for a kingdom marriage. Just say you want to marry, finish. But if you are looking for a kingdom marriage, that must be modeled after Christ and his church. Let's move on. So any marriage or relationship, because there are kingdom relationships, before you get to kingdom marriage, you get to kingdom relationships. So any marriage or relationship that does not have this in mind as a vocal point will not represent a kingdom marriage. Today we have so many kin social media kingdom marriages, but in reality, they are not kingdom marriages. God does not look at them, he just sees them as one celebrity. So that is a kingdom marriage. And mind you, a kingdom marriage is not when your father in the Lord, your apostle, marries a popular minstrel. A lot of Christians these days. If someone from their local church get married, they don't target Christian kingdom marriage. But if an apostle that can speak in tongues on Facebook marries one powerful singer, they'll say, wow, kingdom marriage. No, that's not a kingdom marriage. A kingdom marriage, remember, two Christians deciding to model their marriage after Christ and his church. So it is not any church marriage. That's a lot of paparazzi. Okay, he bought her car. He surprised her with car. There were there were ten trumpeters and violinists, and the marriage was done in Europe, and the honeymoon was done in Dubai, and they were speaking in tongues and people were falling under the anointing. That is not kingdom marriage. It is simply any marriage that seeks to follow the blueprint laid down by Christ. So why is this whole? noise this rave about kingdom marriage why are we being particular about 
Christians having Christian marriages. Why? Kingdom marriages are needed number one for our society. Look at the rate of decay in the society. Look at the rate of killings in the society. Why? Children from dysfunctional homes. Pastors have children that are cultists. Pastors, general overseers, have children that are serial killers. It is happening. Founders of churches have children that are atheists. It is happening. So why is it important to have a kingdom mind? Because of the society. Number two, because of the church, the bride of God. Look at what we have in the church today. Most churches, is the, our parents, about 50, that are still keeping the fire. The young ones just want to wear jeans and gown and high heel and sing and dance and go back home. Because they, didn't, they were not raised in that, in that environment. So if you have a kingdom marriage, that's a reason to aspire to have a kingdom marriage. Because you want to raise godly children. We go into society, who go into the church. And in your immediate family, who will influence things for God. Amen. Praise God. And I believe we all aspire to kingdom marriages. Because if you are listening to me, I believe you are still single. I don't think we have much married people here. So we are all single pringles here. And I believe we can still get it right. We've not, we've not, it's not too late for us. It's not too late. It's not too late for us. So quickly, what is waiting? What is waiting? Remember, our topic is focusing on how to wait. How to wait. Since we have said, let us not be in a hurry. Let us not be in a hurry. How do we wait? The dictionary says to wait is to be in a state of readiness. Without doing so much because you are expecting something to happen. That means to wait is to be in a state of readiness. Without doing so much. That is you minimize your own efforts. Until what you are expecting happens. Let me repeat it again. To be in a state of readiness without doing so much until what you are expecting happens. From this definition, three things stand out. Number one, we see that waiting is a verb. Waiting is an action word. For the fact that we say you should wait, does not mean, okay, you go home, fold your hands, and sleep off, and say, okay, whenever God wants, God will send down a damn cell for me. As wife, no. If you have been told to wait, it's just as, as I told you earlier. If they tell you to wait for four years for your certificate, it does not mean go home and stop reading. It means go and do your part. When the time for certificates come, you will not be the one to pursue it. The school will call you and give you that certificate. So waiting needs you to stop what you have been doing. And wait. Perhaps you are the brother that every Sunday next to Moria waiting to, to pursue three sisters after church. Or you are the sister that wants to sing with the best solo voice so that Brokunle from Ocean Unit will notice you again. Even though you have been doing it for the past three months and has not noticed you. Waiting means that you stop those fake taxes because they don't work. And number three, remember we, from the definition we say it is and see what you're expecting happens. So it is not waiting if you are not expecting anything. If you see a man by the corner and you say, what are you doing? You say, I'm waiting. The next question will be, what are you waiting for? Because waiting means that there's something in anticipation. You're expecting something. So that is waiting, waiting. That you have been told to wait does not mean idleness. It does not mean, okay, don't say hello to any sister again. If any sister enters your eye, you can still say hello. I give you the permission. But wait on God. Wait on God. Wait on God. Waiting is an action word. You don't wait by being laid back. You wait by being ready. You don't wait by being laid back. You wait by being ready. So that the moment the time comes, there are people who after four years in the university, their last project... <laughs> They fall sick, or they travel, or one thing happens and then they don't write it. That whole four years is that's going to waste. They have to wait for an extra year. So waiting means you are ready. You are, you, are, 
you are ready you are waiting for that moment that second that god says okay the time has come and then you pounce on what god has in store for you number two we say waiting needs you to stop what you've been doing why when you wait you're acknowledging the limitation of your method and you accept to do away with it waiting means what you accept that your former methods are limited your former methods are limited so think of all the whole ways you've been trying to mingle before all the your school fees you send it to sister juliet your food stuff you cook for brother jonathan in school every evening you're cooking rice and chicken and giving brother jonathan so that he will notice you every friday you're buying sweet and watermelon for sister christiana and it has not been working they've never pre- returned your call you stop doing that that's what waits me you acknowledge that my methods have not been working remember our text says even though it tarries waits for it it will surely come that's what the bible says it will surely come so if there's any bible passage that clearly speaks to this issue of god when with that ambiguity it is this verse wait for it look at your current state look at how desperate you are for a relationship and tell yourself call your name and say isaac wait call your name call your name say juliet wait john wait yes that's what the bible says. wait for it when it's time god will do it so that verse has an assurance for every christian seeking a god endorsed relationship because the word says wait for it and it will surely come so quickly why is there this frenzy this whole madness this rush to get into relationship ask yourself why am i rushing to get into a relationship why am i rushing to get into a relationship brothers in church are scanning through beautiful faces every sunday to pick a very a, the sister sisters are getting confused whether bros daily is better than bros the whole thing is just crazy everybody is in a hurry nobody wants to wait nobody wants to be single singleness is like hiv is like corona nobody wants to be single again everybody wants to pepe people on, on whatsapp on instagram everybody wants to pepe his neighbor why you want to pepe me because i'm single why Praise God. So we are going into how to wait. That's the core of our discussion. Very briefly, how to wait. What is this waiting? Since we say it is not folding your hands, since we say it is not going back home and being laid back and stop talking to everybody and say, okay, God, do your work. Do what you want to do. I'm tired. No. How do we wait? The Bible gives us pure instructions on how we should wait. How we should wait. This is more of a teaching. So please just pay attention. Maybe some of you came here hoping that as I'm talking, you'll be falling and rolling on the ground under the anointing. I'm very sorry to disappoint you. We're having a very simple discussion with very far-reaching consequences. And I pray God in heaven will do a long-lasting change in your life. Amen. Isaiah 40 verse 31. The Bible says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strengths. <laughs> Number one, they that wait. That means those who have that intention of waiting. What is the first thing? They must renew their strengths. Have that in the back of your mind. Okay. Isaiah 40, 31, everybody read with me. Number two, they shall mount up with wings as eagle. Number three, they shall do what? They shall run and not be weary. And number four, they shall walk and shall not faint. That verse encapsulates everything that God has in store for us. What does it mean to wait? He said, they that wait upon the Lord their God, number one, shall renew their strength. So my dear single brother, my dear single sister, the period of waiting is a time you should renew your strengths. Perhaps you are too weak to go into a relationship. You are too weak, weak to get married. We have weak married men, weak pastors, 
weak fathers and weak mothers renew your strength number two he says you shall mount up with wings as ego we have chickens in the church these days god wants them to fly like eagles but they didn't wait and so why they were still limited Fatherless, wingless, they rushed into marriage and they can't fly. So they have dysfunctional homes today. So how do you renew your strength? Remember it says, they that wait on the Lord. So after I have chosen to wait, the first thing you should seek is to do what? To renew your strength. You rush back to God and say, God, this kingdom marriage is far greater than I thought. It is of far-reaching consequences that I imagined. So number one, ability to withstand pain. That's how to renew your strength. Those are the things you should seek the face of God for. Number one, the ability to withstand pain. That's how you know men that have renewed their strength. Ability to withstand pain. That no matter what happens, they, you, you, you say you say so-called brother in church because a sister says no to his proposal he backslides uh -uh. why he has not renewed his strength he said i'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to church again i'm not singing again why so as we are as you are waiting have it at the back of your mind that the ability to withstand pain is something that is innegotiable you need to have it in your life Number two, the ability to withstand disappointment. People will disappoint you. On your wedding day, the people that told you they will, they will contribute to 200,000 for you and bring one million, they say, don't worry, we'll take care of refresh joints. They will disappoint you. The most I say, don't worry, don't worry. Uh -uh, we'll, buy, we'll bring cash for you as wedding gifts. They will disappoint you. In fact, there are people who have done traditional marriage and the, the girl still disappointed them. A week to white wedding. So in your waiting period, build in you the ability to withstand disappointment. Number three, emotional intelligence. That's how you renew your strength. Emotional intelligence. Many men, most men, women, ladies, young men, singles don't have emotional intelligence. You don't know how to read emotions. You don't know how to talk. Relationship is not for everybody. Relationship is not for everybody. Number four, ability to make decisions and accurate judgments. So remember four things under renewal strength. Number one, ability to withstand pain. Number two, the ability to handle disappointment. Number three, emotional intelligence. Number four, ability to make decisions if you hope to be a father in this life you must have the ability to make decisions it is innegotiable ability to make decisions so go back to the verse what is the next word there they shall mount up with wings as ego which i say it is the same thing as what growing capacity capacity that's what it means to grow wings you grow capacity so under growing capacity, what areas do you need to grow capacity for? You are just a fresh young guy, you are 25, you are 26, you are 27. Or you are a lady, you are 26, 25. Fresh out of school, fresh as a graduate, and you want to rush into marriage. What do you have to offer? How much is your bank account? Some people say that's a canal discussion. What do you mean by I'm a driver in my bank account? I'm trusting in Jehovah Jireh, the God our provider. It has a very funny take. In your waiting period, that's when you need to build your finances. That's how to wait. If you don't build finances, when God says, okay, the time is now, and the lady's family asks you, so how much do you have to finance the wedding? You say, I'm trusting God that I have just 30,000 in my account. They will release Doc to pursue you from that house. So that's how to grow capacity. Number one, finance. Very, very important. Anybody that tells you 
Finance is not important. It's lying for you. If I ask sister that is doing night call with you every night and uh, exchanging love with you and saying, I love you, I love you. When one brother will come with money, <laughs> she will block your number. That's the truth. Young men take notes financially. Financially, grow capacity. Number two, develop your skills. Develop your skills. You don't have any skill. And you're not positioning yourself to end better. You are a young man in the 21st century. You cannot use Microsoft Word. You cannot use Microsoft Excel. You don't know a thing about graphic design. You don't know a thing about marketing. You don't know a thing about taking online courses. Nothing. <laughs> they will break your heart. You can write it down. Write it at the back of your journal. I promise you, this year they will break your heart. So when I say you should grow capacity, I mean financially grow capacity. Uh-uh. You want to marry, you have 50,000. Which person's daughter do you want to marry? <laughs> so please remember, grow capacity financially, develop your skills, and position yourself to earn better. Yes. Money is needed even for kingdom marriages. He's not speaking in tongues. Why you speaking in tongues? Time to serve refreshment. You will not give us tongues. You want to take mineral. So please develop yourself. Number two, develop yourself spiritually. You can have all the money in the world. You can have all the skills in the world. You can have the greatest jobs in the world. But if you don't develop yourself spiritually, I'm telling you, your marriage will fail. I know some of you are happy now because you are good in this one. You can speak it talk. Say, yes, yes. This is my, my friend. Go and make money. But seriously, spiritually, you need to pray yourself into that capacity. We have men, these are shameful men. That if they are tired, they sick, they, they, they rush and go and call mommy junior. Come and pray for him, come and pray for him. You are a disgrace. You are the priest of your home as a, as a kingdom man. You are the priest. So if your wife is taking that position, you are a shame. Number three way to grow capacity is influence. Influence. Number one, I say finance. Number two, I say spiritually. Number three, I say influence. The waiting period is when you should build a system that commands influence. Some of you don't have influence. You don't have up to you. You cannot you you cannot influence up to three people. You don't have three people in your in your community that you can influence. You don't have people that look up to you. People who, who, who are emboldened by your life. No, you don't have them. So be it career, be it in your church, develop influence. An area where people can look up to you. That's how you know someone who is waiting. Someone who is in the waiting room of the Lord. That's what it looks like. Number four, insights. Remember we are talking about the ego. How to grow wings as an ego. Capacity. Number four, insights. If you know much about egos, you know that an ego can see a rat from as high as you can imagine. The vision of an ego is unmatched in this world. So as a man, as a lady, as a single brother, single sister, waiting in this waiting room of the Lord, you must have insights. An ego sees with frightening accuracy from high up in the sky. A single person should develop such insights. At such a period. How do you do that? You read books. When else did you read a book? You're not reading books. You're only on Insta blog. You're only on Gist Lover. Looking for how this celebrity slapped that celebrity. You are joking. Attend programs. Engage in stimulating conversations. Isn't every time you're talking about how uh, Philip wore red tie and yellow trousers and brown belts? No. Engage in intellectual conversations. That's how to build yourself. So that when you go to visit your fa- your, your father-in-law, he wakes you already and say, Hi, I heard about so so and so events. You say, Kai. You say, Kai. Or more. That's all you can say. Because you don't know anything about what you say. God will help you. Number five. Amen. Let's go back to the verse. It says, 
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. And they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's endurance. So first, we say renew strength. Second, we say to grow capacity. And third, we say endurance. These are the three areas you need to round up yourself on when you are waiting. Endurance. How to walk without fainting? This is a mystery. How do you walk and run without getting tired? My brothers, my sisters, marriage is a marathon. So if you think this, this love that is busting your head will take you past the first year of marriage you are joking. That's why the Bible says they shall run and not be weary because they have waited on the Lord. That's why you see people married 50 years and they are still in love. 60 years and they are still in love. Why your favorite celebrity married for six months and is getting a divorce? This is the difference here. They didn't wait. Because people who wait on the Lord, they have the ability to run without sprinting. That means 20 years into that marriage, she's still the love of your life. 30 years into that marriage, he's still the boo in your, in, I mean, the mosquito in your cupboard. So the waiting period is where you learn how to accommodate flaws and differences. I've seen couples that fought because of how uh, how, they, how they used to press toothpaste. This one says press it from up. This one says press it from down. And there is problem. Those are jokers. When you master how to run without getting tired, you won't find marriage tiring after the first three years. That's a, that's a very true fact. When you master how to run without fencing, marriage will be as easy as one, two, three for you. So dearly beloved people, dearly beloved brothers, dearly beloved sisters, I know this topic seems like a joke from the name Godwin. You say, ah, what do they have? What do they have to say? What do they have to say? Ah, it's not Godwin. Everybody is shouting on Twitter, on Facebook, but it goes beyond that. It is serious. <clears throat> we don't want to witness another marriage. That has enough fanfare. Everybody is ju- jubilating. Everybody is posting your pictures on WhatsApp, on Facebook. And two years after, you have become enemies. No. That's the use of, of this conference. We don't have an celebrated marriage that will not be celebrated in heaven. We want to have kingdom marriages. People who have decided. Remember I told you the blueprint is how Christ loved the church. The Bible says he left the right hand of the Father and he came and gave himself for the church. So when people say, I can, I can die for you, literally, that you should meet. That is how Christ sets the standard. Now, if it comes to dying for that person, you are willing, beyond willing to do that. I pray God will help you in the name of Jesus. We'll be rounding up soon. We'll be rounding up very soon. So what should you not be doing in your waiting period? Remember, I've told you what we should be doing in your waiting period. I've told you to renew your strength. And I told you under that, you need to know how to handle disappointments. You need to know how to handle pain, emotional intelligence, and how to make decisions. We talked about growing your capacity. And I told you how to have financial capacity, spiritual capacity, influence, and insight. And then we talk about endurance. So quickly, what should you not be doing? Since we've said what you should be doing, what should you not be doing in your waiting period? This is where some people have problem with me now. <clears throat> what should you not be doing in your waiting period? Number one, Hebrews 13 verse 4 says, you should keep the bed undefiled. Stop fornicating in your waiting period. You are not waiting. You are wasting. Tell your neighbor that. You are not waiting. No, you are wasting your life. Your waiting period is not when you should be exchanging kisses. <laughs> That's not waiting period though. I didn't teach you that one. You see after all that the geo says emotion, we should get emotional intelligence. So you want to do it by hug and kisses. Please. Maybe Brother Philip told you that. It's not me. 
maybe you ask them later. Waiting period, you should not be sinning against God. No fornication, no kisses, no private Bible study in your house, no private Bible study sections and prayer with you by 12 a.m. in your room, please. If you feel like praying, call Brother Philip as a brother and pray with him. Sister Cambodia, if you want to pray, call Sister Julie and pray with her. Marriage or waiting period is not when you should be appearing desperate. Number two, you should not appear desperate in your waiting period. Sisters, you should not appear desperate in your waiting period. Not one that the Jew will just say, ah, happy Sunday, sister. And the next, the, the next week, you already say, ah, so when I come in to see my parents, ah, uh, ah, uh, be coming down. <laughs> be coming down. Don't show desperation during your waiting period. You're reducing your value. Nobody values desperate people. Brother Shegu, because sister, sister, what name should I use now? Sister Gloria, just smiles at you after church. They are asking her when you want to come. When should you come and see her people? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Don't appear desperate. <laughs> Number three, you should not be sampling people. Dating, waiting period is not for sampling. You sound to gain experience. Marriage is not Nigerian employers, I would say five years experience. No. So you want to date Juliana, you want to date Christiana, you want to date uh, Justina and be breaking up with them after two, two weeks. No. No sampling, no testing. Thank you. If you are waiting, let it be that you are waiting. Be like me, be very, very single. And lastly, you should not be settling. Settling means you say, ah, when the desirable is not available, the available becomes desirable. No. You say, I've been praying for three years. I've not seen, no any sister have told me. Yes, so I'll go to, ah, there's one bronze gay, one slay queen that likes clubbing. That one used to give me eye. So you set you for that one. No. Oh, you say, Kai, all these brothers in my church, they don't used to see me very well. So that Yahoo boy in my streets, he has been disturbing my life since. Let me just give him a chance. No. Number one, you should not be fornicating or kissing or prolonged hugging. You know, some hugging these days are prolonged. Only be hugging somebody for five minutes. Uh -uh. Number two, you should not appear dead spirits. Number three, you should not be sampling. Number four, you should not be settling. So very, very important. You should not be doing that in your waiting period. If you are waiting, let us know you are waiting. How can you say you are waiting and then you are receiving love message from three different sisters every day? Ha! I don't understand that kind of waiting, no. Because that's not the kind of waiting me I know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you say you are waiting and Bro Shegu is buying Shia on Monday. Bro Philip is buying Shawarma on Wednesday. Bro John is taking you shopping on Friday. Ah uh ah. -uh. You are not waiting, my sister. Remember, we say if you are waiting, you should limit your own activity. And allow God and let God let God take full control, let God take full charge. We have less than five minutes to round up, and I'll just give you like three Bible school examples of people you should learn from from the Bible. Couples, you should learn from from the Bible. <clears throat> I believe it should be you should have enough things to take to God in prayers this evening. You should have enough things. If I close your door and, and say, Kai, God, I've been messing up. I've been messing up. Brothers, 
your juta should be filled now with things you want to take to God and say, ah, I've not been waiting seriously. I've not been renewing my strength. I don't have chichi in my account. Spiritually, I'm nothing. Influence zero. Inside zero. You cannot take heartbreak. Ah, you are wasting. You are, you, are, you are a joker. So please, lessons from the Bible quickly, and then God will help us from there. So let's look at Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah. If you look at their marriage very well, you know that ah, a kingdom marriage is not married marrying your childhood friend. All are from the same village. Abraham and Sarah were related. So to see all the challenges they had in marriage, you should know that it is not about this my place. Unfortunately, we have Christians who still believe that I'm from Anambara, so it must be Sister Chinelo. Also undo from my local government. If not, I'm not doing. Abraham married Sarah. And it was Sarah that advised him to go and get a side chick. So if you don't want side chick marriage, please. Marriage, kingdom marriage, is not about we are from the same village. It is not about that. Number two. Kingdom marriage is not... My spiritual father recommended him or her to me. That's not kingdom marriage. Listen and listen very well. Some of you are too dependent on your so-called spiritual fathers or mentors. That if they don't recommend that person, then you say, "Kai, the person is not for you." Even if God tells you for you, because of what someone else says, you say no. Take a look at Isaac and Rebecca from the Bible. It was his father himself that recommended Rebecca for him. They brought her, they said, I go to so so and so family. He sent Abraham said a servant. They have picked her specially for Isaac. And if you look at their marriage closely, you know that that was not a kingdom marriage. In fact, Rebecca was the one that cost the home to break up by what she did to Jacob and Esau. So kingdom marriage is about your spiritual father recommending someone for you. It is God recommending someone for you. And lastly, kingdom marriage is not about how long you suffered to get her. Take a look at Jacob and Rachel. In fact, Jacob is a very serious man. He served 14 years. Which I know none of you, none of the brothers here can do. 14 years for a wife. Just to get married. Served 7 years, they gave him Leah. Served another 7 years, they gave him Rachel. So for 14 years, he suffered. And he was doing houseboy. So kingdom marriage is not by how long you suffered. Some people think, because you met in January, and she said yes in February. She Kai, it was too easy. You start doubting. No. But some people say, Hi, from year one, I was proposing. She refused. See, seven years later, she Kai, yes, that's a kingdom marriage. No. Kingdom marriage is not all that. Remember the definition we say kingdom marriage is any married by two Christians that is modeled after god so my dearly beloved brothers my dearly beloved sisters according to the bible in the book of isaiah chapter 64 verse 4 that's my last verse before we pray isaiah chapter 64 verse 4 the bible says for since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither had the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for them that wait for him. That's what the, that's exactly what First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says also. It says, I have not seen, neither as ears heard, nor as he entered into the heart of men 
what God has prepared to them that waits for him. So that's my rounding and my closing verse to you this evening. The Bible says, eyes have not seen or ears heard what God has prepared to them that wait for him. So please, my beloved brother, beloved sister, wait for God. Wait for God. Wait for God. Don't be in a hurry. Tomorrow is Saturday. You still see some of your friends getting married. But wait. Wait for God. Wait for God. And I pray God will help you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's just close our eyes as we go to the Lord in prayer this evening. And say, Father, I've listened. I've listened. I've heard your word. I've heard your word. Open your eyes and say, Father. Open your mouth and say, Father. This was a teaching moment. This was a teaching moment for me. A learning moment for me. Help me, oh God. Perhaps you've been on a fast lane. You've been on a fast lane. You've been running helter skelter. You've been feeling helpless. Because you thought the whole world is leaving you behind. Say, God, help me to be patient with you. Help me to wait, to wait, to wait, to wait. Because if you miss it in marriage, I tell you, there's no regret as strong as that. If you miss it in marriage, ah, you live the rest of your life in pain. Perhaps what you've been yearning for was a celebrity marriage. You say, ah, I want you to be trending all over Facebook. Did I get married? Disabuse your mind from that this evening. Perhaps what you've been looking for is you want to marry a popular man of God. Disabuse your mind from that this evening. Perhaps what you've been looking for is say, I want to, I want to, I want to get married to this very beautiful sister so that ah, everybody will say, ah, I'm very fortunate. No. Disabuse your mind. Marriage is serious business. God takes marriage as serious business. Marriage is the first institution that God is created on earth. Immediately after creation, he instituted marriage. That's to show you the gravity of marriage. See, if you are single today, it is still a blessing. Don't be in a hurry. Wait. Wait for God. Wait for God. Wait for God. Say, God, help me to wait for you. Hmm. Help me to wait for you. Help me to wait for you. Help me to wait for you. Remember the topic is how to wait. How to wait. Perhaps you have no idea how to wait. But tonight God has taught us that to wait is to ask for strength. It's not to go back and lie down on your bed. No. It's just to say, God, I'm helpless. I don't have strength. How can I go into this institution without strength? Renew my strength. We've learned that to wait is to get renewed capacity. It's to build capacity like the ego. To grow wings like the eagle. To fly like the eagle. Perhaps you've not been flying. You've never flown before. This is the time to say, Father, teach me how to fly. Teach me how to fly. Let me build capacity in my finances. Let me build capacity. In every aspect of my life, may I build capacity, O God. Perhaps you don't have what it takes to endure pain. What it takes to endure break. What it takes to endure difficulties to endure roadblocks along the way say oh god make me ready make me ready make me ready that i will build a home more than after you a christian home a kingdom marriage oh come on adosh man dos palabran dos filo kamara dos de bakash palada men tabron dos palas kavalantas kepi malados holy ghost i ask and i pray tonight let there be fresh fire burning on every heart here in the name of Jesus. Manta cabredos fantasca mi cobredes fali brodos copranda cadabadas. Mentos revet di cobrenda manus capenda paladas shente quebrados palanda yada. Me fondo brundos pala comberi pranda no mush mala conde manaer. I pray, Holy Ghost, mentus papuntus parianda cascapandali, e comalande bucumbrenus palada. Upon every heart here of listening to my voice, oh God, I pray, give them what it takes to build capacity in the name of Jesus Christ. But I pray that at the appropriate time, you will make all things beautiful in their life in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. Amen. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. I'm grateful and I hope in my only two way of the blessing to you. Thank you so much. I look forward to speaking to you some other time. I pray God will help us, God will keep us. Every area that needs to be instructed and needs to be corrected, God will help us to implement those corrections in the name of Jesus. Amen.